Amen. All right, y'all did good. Grandbabies, y'all was good on them tambourines. Amen. All right. Turn me to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers. I'm not going to keep you long. I think I'm going to sing most of my voice out of here. Amen. So we're going to just get it in quick. The book of Numbers 23. Numbers 23. I'm going to go to verse 19. The book of Numbers, and I might be a little longer than normal. I didn't get to mark my Bible off because uh, it was a bike, uh, back to school night, but God is good. We're going to work it out. Numbers 23, go to verse 19. When you got to say amen, then you got to say hold up. It says, God is not a man that he should lie. All right. Neither the son of a man. That he should repent. That means apologize for a lie. Then it says, He hath said it, shall not he do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall it not be made good? Then it says, Behold, I have received a commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and it cannot be reversed. God is not like men that he should lie. And it's interesting, uh, young ladies, uh, you're dating in relationships. And one thing that a lot of young men do is lie. That's what we do. We lie. We lie because we want to get sex from you. Amen. We lie because we want a relationship with you. We lie because we want to trap you in a relationship. We lie. Let me see. We have a girlfriend. Then we lie to you about the girlfriend that we have so we can keep you from getting a boyfriend. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. And when whatever God says, he means it. And whatever God says he's going to do, it shall be done. He is not like men, because men, that's what we do, we lie. And we lie because we have agendas. God has no agendas. God tells the truth. Because God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's look at verse 20. It says this. Behold, I have received the commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. What does that mean? God says he wants to bless you. And he says the blessing that he has for you, Kiara, cannot be reversed. He has a blessing for you, Jaheen. He has a blessing for you, Jaheen. He has a blessing for you, Brother Marion. Ty say he has a blessing for you. He has a blessing for you. He has a blessing for you. And he says the blessing that he has for you cannot be reversed. So if the blessing that he has for you cannot be reversed, why do some of our lives seem like a curse? What do you think about that? God says, I have a blessing for you. And he said, the very blessing that I have, it cannot go backwards. It cannot change. It cannot be reversed. But why is it, if that be the case, that some of our lives seem so cursed? Amen. Put a pin in that. Next, turn to me to Psalms 89 and 33. Psalms 89 and 33. Psalms 89 and 33. Psalms 89 and 33. Psalms 89 and 33 says this. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will not, not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. This is talking about David here. And it says right here in Psalms 89:33, Nevertheless, my loving kindness I will not utterly take from him nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. This was talking about David, and David is sort of like many of us. Uh, I talked Sunday about how David loved the women. David, David loved women. He, had, uh, he loved women like some people love wine and alcohol or weed. That was his thing. He loved the ladies. He loved them tall and chocolate. He loved them short and fat. He just loved women. And the Bible says, even though he had this affection or affliction for women, he had a heart after God. 
And what happens is, when we have our addictions, and all of us in this room have addictions. Some of y'all are stuck on gambling. Some of y'all are stuck on Pornhub. It was interesting, I was reading the paper today and it said, uh, uh, only fans will not be discontinued. And you know, I guess people were like, ooh, thank you Jesus, I can start making my money. Or whatever was going on. Some people have an addiction to only fans. Some people have an addiction to shopping. Some of y'all are shopaholics. Some of you have an addiction to lying. Some of y'all, you, you can't tell the truth if, if it's struck in your mouth, you would still lie. The thing is, we all come short. We're all sinners. But the Bible says, sinners saved by grace. So the thing is, God says here, he says, he will not leave you, even though you might have a life full of sin. And even though he has spoken a blessing over you, you have turned the very blessing that he's given you to a curse. Amen. It says, God will not remove his love for you regardless of what you do. If you are a kid and you have a heart after God, he will stick with you to the very end. Look at Psalm 80, 89, 34. It says, my covenant I will not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. God says he will not break his covenant with you. Now what's interesting is, some of y'all don't know what a covenant is. And uh, Sister Jane, I have you, you went all over the world last week. We, we spoke, you had that message, I asked you what a covenant was and you spoke it out. A covenant is a promise, or it's a deal that you made with God. How many of you have ever made a covenant with God? Raise your hand, huh? amen. So the problem is this. A lot of people don't understand that you can get the same thing from God that you get from the devil. So what we do is rather than we ask God for a covenant, we go and we ask the devil. That's called selling your soul. That's what many people uh, are supposedly guilty of in Hollywood and the hip-hop industry. But the very things that you ask for, you can also ask God for prosperity. You can ask God for health and longevity. And the good thing about God is when he blesses you, it comes with gifts. Whenever the devil blesses you and Satan can bless you too, it always comes with a curse. It always requires a sacrifice. The problem with most of us is this. We have never made a covenant with God. Most of us have never made a covenant with God. We've never gotten to an agreement. God, if, if you do this, I'll do that. Uh, we've never gotten into an agreement with God. And because we've never entered into an agreement with God, although this word is spoken here where he says he will honor his covenant, you ain't never made one with him. So since you never made one, the blessing that he already spoke over you will not come to fruition. God will not force you to be blessed. God will not force you to be blessed. God will not force you to do anything that you don't want to do. If you choose to be blessed, it's because you will make a decision to do the things to be blessed. God is not going to beat you over the head and say, be blessed. You have to want to be blessed. You have to choose to make the decisions to be blessed. Next, turn to Leviticus 26 and 2. Leviticus 26 and 2. Way in the front. Leviticus 26 and 2. Leviticus 26. Thank you, Lord. Leviticus 26 and 2. Leviticus 26 and 2. Leviticus 26 and 2 says this. Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary, for I am the Lord, the God. Verse 3. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my sanctuary and my commandments and do them, verse 4, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and the threshing shall reach into the vineyards, and the vintage shall reach into the sowing time, and ye shall eat the bread and be full. And I will give you peace in your land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid you of the evil beasts of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land, and ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you. These are all the promises that God has before us. He says you won't have nothing to fear. He says you will always have peace. He says your bank account will always be full. He said your refrigerator will always have food. Your gas, your gas tank will always be on full. Everything around your children will always be happy. 
This is a covenant with God. But if you look at Leviticus 26 and 2, part of this covenant is you have to come to church. That's the covenant of coming to church. The problem with most of us is only 10% of the population goes to church every Sunday. 42% say that they're Christians, but only 10% actually go to church. So because most people don't, or they come Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, and every other funeral, or whatever. But because they come to church like that, now you don't have a covenant with God. So he cannot bless you because you haven't done your part. Uh, how many of you ever, well, y'all, most of y'all are young, but you ever been in a relationship with somebody and you wanted good things for them and they didn't want nothing for themselves. Raise your hand. If you ever dated somebody and, and you had a good vision, you wanted them to get a job, you, you wanted them to be happy, you wanted all the pain in their life to be gone. But every time you were with them, they kept making decisions opposite of everything that you wanted for them. And see, that's what it's like with God. He says, I have all these things for you. Remember, the blessing he spoke over you cannot be reversed. But he will not force you to be blessed. You have to do your part. Everybody has to do their part. And the thing is, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting something different to happen. And a whole lot of us is loco in the mind. Because we keep dating the same fool over and over again. We keep dating the same girl over and over again. We keep doing the same thing. And then when the crazy stuff happens, we're like, wow, look at what happened. You keep dating the same person. Change the people that you date, and your outcome will be different. Change your work habits, and your paychecks will be different. Change a, something about your life, and something will come out different. Next, turn with me. The Proverbs 3 and 9. 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 I'm saying it so much that I didn't got it marked out. I was running late. Amen. Proverbs 3 and 9. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. The Living Bible translation says this, Under the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income, and he will fill your barn with wheat and barley, and it will overflow with wine vats of the finest wines in the land. Uh, sometimes I get calls in the middle of the night. And what's interesting, uh, our church is young. And what's interesting about you being young, you don't have a lot of money at this age in your life. Uh, most of y'all still don't live on your own. And I can tell you this, we've been having this church over and on about six years. I've never gotten a call from a church member in need of anything. And what's powerful about that is, my phone ring blow up all the time. Oh man, this happened, y'all. Oh, this and that, this and that. And when I look down, it's never one of y'all. And the thing, what that means is, you might be in need, because every time, every now and then, you, you come short. You know, every now and then, you kind of low. But the point is, regardless of how low you got, God always has a cushion for you. Because he's keeping you. Because you're honoring his word. But the people who fall flat on their face, they call me all the time. Man, I need money for this. I need money for this. I need money for this. And I look at them, and they never go to church. And I said, wow. The Bible says God will keep you. And I like to tell people this. You don't have a money problem. You got a giving problem. See, God can't give you anything if you never give anything. Let me say it again. In order to give, you got to give. In order to get, you got to give. If you always keeping all your money in your pockets and you never give out anything, why would God give to you? It's interesting. In 1997, Bill Gates gave the whole city of Compton, sorry, the whole school district of Compton computers. The first computers that Compton Unified ever got was from Bill Gates. He bought every school in Compton 
all computers, all those computer labs, those were Bill Gates. And what was interesting was, he says, I'm gonna adopt this school district. He wanted to adopt Compton. He said, y'all would have to stay in our everything, everything, everything. But somehow, some way, we end up losing Bill Gates because some people at the top got greedy and they wanted money instead of computers. The point is, why would the richest man on earth want to give? Because they understand the principle. If you don't give, then you can't receive. And giving and receiving go hand in hand. It's not about getting as much as you can get. The devil is a lot. Satan wants you poor. That's why he got y'all, I'm going to get me some red bottoms. I'm going to get me a Mercedes. All these people got this PPP money. Look at them today. Broke. How the hell you broke? And you just had $80,000. How the hell you broke? And you had all that money. I'm looking on your Instagram. You flashing bands and bands and bands. And today you broke. You right back at Walmart where you was when I saw you the first time. Because they got all that money and they didn't give to anybody. They got pretty beautiful cars. They rented cars and drove up and down the street. They went and bought all kind of crazy shoes and went off, took trips to Miami, 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 and blowing all this money. The Louis Vuitton store was packed. People walked up a line down the street going into Louis Vuitton to buy $3,000 purses. And today they have nothing because they didn't give to anybody. But I had a couple of our church members who were scammers. Amen. Ain't going to say no name. Praise the Lord. And every time they got a little bit of this, they said, he'll pass here and bless you. And today they still got a little money. I won't say no name. won't say no name because they still blessed. Because they understood. If you get, you have to give. They go hand in hand. You, it can never be all about you getting. Because if you get and you don't give to anybody, you corrupted the very gift that God has given you. Jesus says this, turn to Matthew, 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 Matthew 8 and 10. Matthew 8 and 10. Matthew 8 and 10. Matthew 8 and 10. Matthew 8 and 10 says this. I think it's Matthew 10 and 8. Sorry, I was lying when I was writing this thing. Matthew 10 and 8. Matthew 10 and 8. Matthew 10 and 8. It says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out demons. He's talking to his disciples. And then he says, freely ye have received, freely ye must give. Freely you have received, freely ye must give. And the reason why God said freely you have received is this. You can't work unless God give you the power and the strength. You can't do anything unless God give you the power and the strength. Matter of fact, turn to Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Bishop, turn to me. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says this. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth. For it is he that giveth you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear to the fathers as unto this very day. See, when God allows you to get a job, he, he blesses you for somebody that says, yes, I will hire you and I will pay you. That's a blessing from God. What we do, is some of us do is, I got this job, I got this degree, I bought this house. I did this. And God is looking at you. Oh, you cowardly fool. You didn't do anything. Because he's the one that gave you the power. He's the one that gave you the opportunity. He's the one that opened the doors that were closed. Most of the times when you get a job, you're not the most qualified person. Well, I know when I got a teaching job, I sure didn't know what I was doing. I ain't never taught nobody nothing. But God opened the door. And then God gives you this opportunity. And then you say, it's mine, it's mine, and he might. He's looking at you like, okay, I'll let it be yours. But because it's yours, you now have to deal with Satan. Because you don't want my blessings. So now since this is all yours and you did all this by yourself, all right, go ahead. I'm going to let you go ahead and heal yourself from cancer. Go ahead. I'm going to let you cure your children. Go ahead. I'm going to let you take care of this foreclosure. Go ahead. I'm going to let you take care of this divorce. Go ahead. I'm going to let you take care of this diabetes and this COVID and all this foolishness. 
and then you find out that your job can't do nothing with cancer. You find out that your job can't do nothing with a foreclosure. Your job can't do nothing with depression and suicide. You find out that you need God. Matter of fact, turn me to Malachi 3 and 8. 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 So we're going to read verses 8 through 12. Malachi 3 and 8. Malachi 3 and 8 says this. Will a man rob God? Then it says, yet, yeah, how have you robbed me? But ye say, wherein have you robbed me? And God says, in tithes and offerings. And then he says, ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10, then it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me, God says, test me, saith the Lord God of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive. God says, test me. He says, I'm the one that blessed you. And I tell people all the time, God don't need your money. He don't. God, first of all, what is money? It's a piece of paper. God need more paper? Why does God need a dead tree? He doesn't. Uh, I tell people this, I don't need your money. But I'm tired. I'm blessed. I, I tell people this. I say, if you drop dead tomorrow, I'm going to be fine. Matter of fact, if you ain't never gave me a nickel, I'm going to be fine. Because God takes care of me. And that's what you need to have, that relationship with him. The Bible says if God be for you, nothing can stand against you. You want that relationship with him. But part of that covenant relationship with him is the prospect of giving. And that's where a lot of people come up short. And they say, well, you just trying to get my money. I say, keep your dang money. I always tell them this, Satan know how to get your money. Because what happens if you read the next verse, verse 11, it says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall the vine cast her fruit before his time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And nations shall call ye blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. God says if you become a giver, your whole life will be blessed. People will look at you and they'll see blessings. They'll see your children and they'll see blessings. They'll see your household and they'll see blessings. They'll look at your health and they'll see blessings. It doesn't mean that you won't have hard times. It just means that even when you're going through something, God has a blessing because you have a covenant with him and he'll always pull you up. The Bible says a righteous man will fall seven times, but he'll always get back up. A righteous man will fall seven times, but he'll always get back up. And it also says in Psalm 34 and 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver them from you all. Amen. And the very last thing, turn me to Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah 55 and 6. So that covenant was the covenant of tithing, the covenant of giving. I tell people, if you, if you want to review, because most of the time when Satan tests us, he tests us with our money. If you want to get rid of your money problems, learn how to give. Amen. Go to Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah, we almost done. Isaiah 55 and 6. Look at the grandmen. They're doing a good job. Amen. You mothers are doing an outstanding job with these young people. God bless you. Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah 55 and 6 says this, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call him while he is near. So the first commandment, this is the covenant. Seek God while he may be found. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. God ain't with nowhere. So why do we got to seek God while he may be found? Because you only got a certain amount of time here on the earth. Uh, I went to a funeral uh, this week, and long story short, the pastor said this, I ain't never heard this. He said, don't let the hearse, the lights of the hearse beat you to the church. I said, whoa, I think you heard it too. He said, don't let the lights of the hearse beat you to the church. And what that means is this, don't let that casket get to the church before you do. Because, see, you only have so much time to have a relationship with God. You only get so much time to establish a relationship with God. 
And what a lot of people like to do at funerals is proclaim everybody got wings and ooh, they up in heaven now and make people feel good. Well, uh, you earn your wings right here, right now. You can't get to know God once you die. Once you die, God ain't talking to you no more. You got to get that relationship with him now. Remember, one of the coldest verses in the Bible says this. Depart from me because I don't know you. You don't, You get to know God now. By you coming to church, the angels have taken attendance. You get to know God now. So don't try to wait until then to get to know God. Next, this is Isaiah 55 and 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For God will pardon him abundantly. Let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Some of y'all need to change your thinking. You think like a poor person. You think like a violent person. You think like a drunk person. You think like a hoish man. You think like a person who has nothing. God says, you need to get rid of these thoughts. Remember, everything that you do starts with a thought. Everything that you do starts with a thought. If, even when you open your phone and you go to an Instagram or go to Snapchat or wherever you go to, it starts with a thought. And the reason why some of you ain't progressing in life is because of your thinking. God said you got to change your thinking. If you want different, you got to change and be different. Matter of fact, turn to Romans 12 and 2. We're almost done, I promise you, promise Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. This is my bishop's favorite passage. This is my old bishop's favorite passage, Romans 12 and 2. What been this message some other time. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2, it says this. And be not conformed to this world. That's the first key right there. If you like your neighbor, you do it wrong. If you're just like your friends, you're in trouble. If, if you're just like everybody around you, you're doing the wrong thing. God said, do not be like the world. But I want to be popular. Uh, I want to be, I want the approval of my friends. Uh, I, I want my friends to value me. Uh, I was reading the newspaper today. I'm going to shut up real short. Uh, it's an Asian man. And this Asian man made $4 billion selling old Jordans. I want you to think about this. He made four billion dollars selling somebody else old stinky tennis shoes. Why? Because black men think that they gotta have a $300 shoe on so that they can feel good about themselves. You are spending $300 on some tennis shoes that cost $3 to make. And you made some Japanese man $4 billion selling old tennis shoes. Why? Because we don't like our self image. And we care what other, we care more what other people think about us than what we think about ourselves. The Bible says, stop trying to impress the world. If you don't learn nothing tonight, stop trying to impress other people. I'm going to tell you this. Beyonce has a billion dollars. She still got haters. Michael Jackson did her a fly on the earth. He had haters. Jesus Christ loved the world, gave his life for everybody. He had haters. Dr. King got shot twice in the head, so you can get an opportunity to vote, and he had haters. The lesson here is, nobody, people will always hate you for some reason. You cannot make the world love you, but you can make God love you. So the Bible says, don't be like the world. Be like God. Matter of fact, Romans 12 and 2, it says, and then it says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God says, change your mind. Because when you change your mind, your life changes. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand for that. Hallelujah. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God has a blessing for you, but he's not going to force you to be blessed. God wants, he, when he created you, 10 billion years ago, he thought about you. Before earth was created, he thought about you. Before the moon was in the sky and the sun was in the sky, he created you. He already had a thought and you were there. It's Jeremiah 29 and 11. And he said, I have good thoughts of you. He has good things that he has for you. But what many of us have to do is block out Satan. Stop trying to be like the world. Uh, people used to think, and this is before I got saved, uh, I knew tattoos was something was wrong with them, and I was like, because everybody did them. When I was growing up, everybody, there were no Jordans in, but at that point, everybody was driving low riders. And I always felt I had to be different, I, maybe because I couldn't afford none of that stuff. But the point is, God says, be different. Be different. Because he created you different. He created you unique. You don't have to be like everybody else. But if you don't know who you are, say, God, I don't even know who I am anymore. I've been faking like everybody else. I don't even know who I am anymore. Get, learn who you are. Do some self-care and find out who are you. Find out who you are. And then follow the path that he set before you. Because he has blessings for you. But he's not going to force you to go there. You have to go there. And do what he's called you to do. And the last thing, establish and create covenants with God. Read your Bible. You get blessed every day. If you read every time you read your Bible, you get a blessing. I promise you. Every time you read your Bible, you get a blessing. When you come to church, that's a blessing. If you want to, if you want to have financial blessings, learn how to tithe, learn how to give. You don't even have to give to the church. I tell people, giving is giving, whether in regards to whoever you give to. So the thing is, if you apply these principles, God will open the doors and the windows of blessings. And we need the blessings to rebuke the curses. Some of you right now have more curses than blessings in your life. That's when life starts to get hard. When you got more negative stuff, you ain't got nothing to smile about. But if you follow these and you get these covenants, God will give you more good things than bad things. Amen. Anybody have any words before we wrap this up? Anybody have any words? Let's give this young lady a hand clap. I remember your face. Amen. Hallelujah. What's your name, girl? Hey, see you the wife. Watch. Anaya. Anaya. Oh, she's so cute. Amen. God bless you. The grandbaby is amazing. Yeah. Give the grandbaby the hand clap. Yeah. The future grandbaby. Hi, grandbaby. Hi, grandbaby. Hi, grandbaby. Feel your <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, everybody grab a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to help us to establish covenants with you. Father, we ask you to help us to become better versions of ourselves. Help us, Father, to find that unique strand that you created us so we can find our purpose and do what you created us to do. Father, we block out negativity. We block out negative images. Father, we block out pain. We block out violence. We block out drunk drivers. We block out anything, Father, that's going to stop us from getting where you want us to go. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into the hand. I squeeze prosperity into the hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into that hand. That these young people come to hand and not to tell. That they become victorious and never defeated. And that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Father. We ask for your favor, Father, in your direction. And Father, please forgive us of our sins. Father, we know that we're sinners, Father, but we ask you to save us with your grace. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Love somebody. Oh.